Glory. The glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Praise God. Praise the Lord. To those that's waiting on the conference line, we're just going to give it a couple of peace and blessings, beloved. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes for those that are um, getting on Periscope. Praise God. Peace and blessings. I am sent me. Praise God. How you doing? The blessings is upon us. Glory. Hallelujah. Good. Praise God. Peace and blessings, family. Hope all is well with everyone. Ah, man. God is good and worthy to be praised. Hey, I'm grateful to come before the people of God one more time. Uh, thankful for this opportunity. You know, I don't take it lightly. You know, that God will grant unto me an opportunity to speak to his people. Um, I believe Christ came in the flesh. Jesus is a wonderful, wonderful savior. He's my hero, my personal hero. He's my greatest champion. I love him with all my heart. Um, please continue to keep me in prayer and as I keep you in prayer, you know, they say a family that prays together stays together. How many know the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, don't forsake the assembling together of yourself as you see the day approaching, that you may be encouraged. So if there's no other time that we need to stay together, and it's in these days, in these last days, you know, we need one another. God has given us great grace in having family in the body of Christ in the fellowship of the saints, in the agreement of the beloveds. Thank you. So, God bless you. So, today I want to talk to you, to you about your valuable self. Your valuable self. I pray everyone have a good day. Is this camera shaking a lot? Because I'm on the table. If it is, let me know. I might have to just adjust it. Hey, Hector, how you doing there? First day on Periscope. Welcome, welcome to Periscope. Praise God. Um, hi, wife. Hi. I love my wife. Um, the scripture we're going to be reading from today is Luke 15. We're going to be reading Luke 15. We're going to be um, reading Luke 15. I want to talk about your valuable self, your valuable self. Um, 
oftentimes as believers we can appreciate the value of who God the Father is in our lives or we can appreciate the value of who Jesus Christ is and what he's done for us you know we can appreciate the value of this prophet's anointing or the signs and wonders and miracles but oftentimes while we're busy um, exalting the value of something else or someone else we're simultaneously devaluing ourselves like we're consistently and constantly putting self down as if self is worthless you know we say things like you know I am not worthy or like you know why did God pick me or who am I that I'm mindful of me? Who is he? Who am I that he is mindful of me? You know, we use all this derogatory language that actually devalues who we really are. Like, so I want to talk to you for a couple of minutes about it. But before I actually get in my lesson, which is going to be Luke 15, I want to show you something. Okay. And if you're on the um, conference line, I'm holding up a dollar. You know, this is a dollar bill. How much is this worth? Somebody comment. Somebody. <clears throat> somebody comment to me off on on Periscope. How much is this dollar worth? This piece of paper. How much is it worth? I'll wait for you guys. I want somebody to let me know. How much is this dollar worth right here? Okay. I'm going to wait a couple minutes for till y'all ready. I don't, I don't think y'all ready yet. Y'all ready now? If y'all ready, give me some hearts or something. I need participation. Like, sow some hearts into my life. Praise God. If you sow in the spirit, you reap in the spirit. Praise God. Amen. Now, how much is this worth right here? This dollar. How much is it worth? It's not a trick question. So, this is a dollar, right? That's all, that's all I asked you. How much is this dollar? It's a dollar. Okay, amen. It's worth one dollar. Praise God. Now, depends on who holding it. <laughs> You're going to have to break that revelation down. Now, this dollar bill, you know, this dollar bill could have been outside on the ground. People could have stepped on this dollar bill. It could have rained on this dollar bill. Dirt could have got on this dollar bill. Somebody could have balled it up and threw it in the garbage. This dollar bill could have fell in the toilet. But no matter what this dollar bill been through, it's still worth a dollar. No matter who stepped on it, no matter how much dirt got on it, no matter what it's been through or where it's been, it's still worth a dollar. You know? It's the same thing about our lives. No matter who's hurt you, who's betrayed you, 
No matter what you've been through in your life, no matter how dirty you got, how much sin you had in your jacket, like, you still have the same value to Father God. You're very valuable to Father God. Father God, I'm just, just going to pray right now. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this moment, Lord God. Thank you that this moment that you've chosen, Lord God, to speak to us, Lord God, to reveal your heart and mind to us, Lord God, concerning us. I thank you, Lord God, for who Jesus is and what he done for us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are for us and not against us, Lord God, that you are determined, Father God, for us to get the revelation of who we are in you. Thank you for cleansing us, washing us, delivering us, healing us, building us up, God. I thank you for conforming us into the image of your son, Lord. I thank you for what love you bestowed upon us that we should be called sons, God. I thank you that our worth is determined by your love for us, Lord God, and not by what we've been through, what we've done, what, we, what mistakes we've made, Lord God, but our worth is our worth, Lord God, is, is um, it comes from your love for us. And you loved us enough to call us sons. And we're grateful for that, Lord. We ask that the spirit of God, the spirit of truth would flow in this periscope, God. That you would open our, our eyes, Lord God, to see. Open our ears to hear. Open our hearts to be able to receive, Lord God, a revelation from you. That would change our lives forever in Jesus name. Amen. So I want to talk to you from Luke 15. Luke 15. <clears throat> and I'm just going to read a little bit. All right. Luke 15. I'm going to start at verse 1. Then I'm reading at the King James Version. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So this parable Jesus spoke to the people because the people lacked discernment. Um, the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the scribes, they lacked discernment. They couldn't understand why Jesus ate with sinners. Why Jesus ate with people that in their eyes were worthless. They, did, they lacked discernment in that they could not discern the value on these people's lives. They felt that because of whatever sin or mistake that they made in their life that they lack worth, that they were unworthy, that they lack value and excellence. But Jesus was able to see past the mistakes and the shortcomings that they made and discern the value of their lives. He counted them worthy to sit at his table. So Jesus gives a parable to help illustrate the heart of Father God, the heart of Jesus Christ. You know, he uses a parable of sheep. Now we know that these people, the culture that they live in, the people of God. You know, this is the Bible is an agricultural book. So a lot of the parables and the revelations is based off agriculture. Sowing and reaping, sheep, shepherds, things like that. So any shepherd would know how valuable one sheep is to him. The sheep is the livelihood of the shepherd. They feed off the sheep. They skin the sheep, make clothes out of them. So the sheep represent the livelihood of a shepherd. It's how they made their living. 
So we know that anything that you make your livelihood of can be extremely valuable to your life. And Jesus used this parable to illustrate the value of people to Father God. That even one lost sheep has great value to God. Okay? Verse 8. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she has found it, she call her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Here Jesus gives another parable, but in this time he speaks about a lost coin. Obviously, coin represents value. You know? I mean, this person had, you know, a, a, a silver coin. But I tell you, if I lose a penny, if I lose a quarter, I'd be searching for it, like. I'd be in between the couches, underneath the rug, looking for a quarter. Because no one wants something that's valuable to go to waste. You know, you walk down the street and you see a dime or a quarter on, on the ground. You, you reach down and you pick it up. Why? Because no one in their right mind will allow something that's valuable to go to waste. And God is the same thing. God loves people. He loves you. He created you and gave your life great meaning and purpose and value. And God isn't about just allowing, you know, um, his investments to go to by the wayside. Isaiah 55 says that, you know, the word of God does not return to him void. But it goes to accomplish that which he sent it to accomplish. So what is that saying? God sends his word and he sends his word to accomplish something. But if you read that scripture, it speak about what he, what he talks about is a person sowing something into a ground and expecting a harvest. And then he says, so shall my word be. So basically, God is saying that his word is an investment. His purpose is an investment. God has invested great purpose and destiny in our lives. God has attached prophecies of destiny over our lives. And God isn't about allowing our value to go to the wayside. He's determined to get us to our destiny. He's determined to get us to our final destination. He's determined to help us fulfill our purpose. Because God isn't about letting something valuable go to waste. Jeremiah 29, 11 is one of our favorite verses that we use as believers. And it says that God said that, I know my thoughts towards you, thoughts of good, to bring you to an expected end, not of evil. Like God said, my, my plans for you are to bring you to an expected end, or what? Your destiny, you know? And God is faithful to the cause, in so much that he made a covenant with us. He made a covenant with us that what? He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Nothing can take us out of his hand. And that's a blessing. Verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that's fallen to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want or lack. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would... Fain had filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. 
And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us see them be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And, and they began to be merry. Praise God. So the first thing I want to talk about in this parable is the son, you know, said that there was two sons, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that's fallen to me. And he divided unto them his living. Okay. So we see a father that's, you know, what his younger son was searching and was seeking the father for his what? Inheritance. You know, the father was very wealthy and the father has set aside a portion of his wealth, praise God, for his sons. And the younger son or the immature son, the son that had not matured yet, he wanted his inheritance now. He wanted the portion of this father's wealth that belonged to him now. And his father was so good that he gave it to him. Now, we can interpret that in many different ways. What is our inheritance in God? God is the father that, is illust that this parable represents is Father God. You know? So what is our inheritance in God? What is our inheritance? You know, we can talk about stuff. Houses that you didn't build, jobs, resources, money. We could talk about those things. Those things are all included in our inheritance package that we receive from our Father. You know, we could talk about gifts, anointings, spiritual blessings. We could talk about those things. You know, the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ. We could talk about those things. Those are all included. In our inheritance package from our father. You know. But one thing as I talked before about wealth. If anyone can remember. What did I teach that. What wealth is. Wealth is our inheritance to God. But wealth is who we are. And what family we belong to. Wealth is having a great name. You know. Wealth is being a part of a family. That has great resources. So when we talk about being wealthy, we're talking about who we are. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says that God said that he'll give us power to get wealth, to establish the covenant. But Jesus said it this way in John chapter 1. To those that received him and many as believe in his name, he gives them power to be sons. So God said that I give you power to get wealth. Jesus said, if you believe in me, I give you power to be a son. So what is our wealth? Our wealth is being a son of God. Like, that's the greatest wealth that God has given us. That's the greatest portion of our, of our inheritance. Is that, you know, we're called children of God. Our identity, who we are in God, is the greatest gift that God can give us. Like. See, G and some people say, okay, well, what about Jesus? Yes, Jesus is a great gift. But the thing about that is God gave Jesus to the entire world, but the whole world doesn't receive him, okay? So the, the greatest gift that God gives us is who we are as sons, okay? It says this in 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, it says this. Verse 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So now through Jesus Christ, we are partakers of the divine nature. Like, you know, 
who I am with my valuable self. I'm a son of God. I belong to God. I'm begotten of God. I'm filled with the spirit of God. I have a relationship with the father. This is the greatest value. This is the greatest wealth that we have. Who I am in God. In so much that God is determined to make you free. Jesus said, if you are my disciple, you will continue on my word. And you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. God want to make you, you free. God want to use you. It's, it's something about us that God loves. You know, God is, God is determined. God is in love with you. You know, God is in love with you. Why would God be in love with you if you didn't have value to him? You know, why would God be in love with you if you, if you being a sinner didn't mean anything to him? God's gave, God paid a price for you. He gave heaven's best for you. That says a lot about how Father God views us. That says a lot about the worth that we have to God. That we have great value to God. Who I am is valuable to God. Like, Not who I'm going to become. No, who I am right now. Who I, am, who I was even when I was a sinner. Who I was in all my filthiness. I still have value to God in so much that God shined the light on me in so much that God sent Jesus to be the living sacrifice for my life. I'm sorry to hear that. So, you know, it's amazing because God values us very highly, but we don't value ourselves like. We don't value ourselves. So the Bible says right here that the father gave to his son his inheritance. First John chapter three, verse one. What love the father has, what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. God filled us with his spirit, given us of his divine nature, gave us his son, gave us the spirit, called the sons. This is our greatest inheritance in God. But yet we don't value ourselves. Like The Bible says, what can a man give in exchange for a soul? What can a man give in exchange for a soul? And oftentimes the way that's taught and the way we preach that is like, you know, what can you give as a sacrifice? What can you give as a payment price for you to enter into heaven? Like, What can a man give in exchange for a soul? And that is true. But if you think about that scripture, he said, what can you give in exchange for your soul? There's nothing that you can give in exchange for your soul because there's nothing with a dollar amount. There's nothing in the entire world that's worth more than you. What can the man give in exchange for a soul? Nothing. Because there's nothing of an equal value than one soul to God. There's nothing in his world. I don't care a billion dollars. I don't care if it's a trillion dollars. You're worth more than a trillion dollars to God. There's nothing in this world. The whole you can accumulate all the riches in this entire world, and it's still not equal the value of how much value you have to God. Okay. Praise God. The Bible says. You know, Jesus said that, um, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Now, we often teach that about focus on materialistic things, money, resources, house and car. And in the pursuit of that, you lose yourself. You lose your life. You so focus on the natural thing that you don't make heaven. That's how we teach that. And that is also true. But think about that. Jesus is really identifying a greater problem. Jesus is really identifying a greater problem. That people discern money, houses, cars. People discern that what someone else has is more valuable than who they are. People discern that what they're seeking after is more valuable than what, what who God has already made them. 
So you're so busy on, you know, seeking after things that you feel is going to make your life better. If I had a bigger house, I'd be happy. If I had a husband, I'd be happy. If I just had more money, I'd be happy. If they just give me a raise on my job, I'd be happy. But you haven't discerned the value of who you are in God and what God has already invested in you. So you spend all this time pursuing something that you think to be more valuable than who you are. So you, what good is it to gain the whole world but lose who you are in the process? Like Lose perspective of the value that Father God placed on you, putting value on other things. You value in this prophet with this anointing. You value in this person with this gift. And now you covet and you want what they have, but you haven't even discerned the value of who you are in God and what God has already given you. I'm going to give you a scripture for that. It's Revelations. Revelations chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the... Le uh, Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor, and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Now listen, he said, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So people esteeming their value in the things that they have. Stuff. And Jesus like you haven't discerned the value. You value in all this other stuff. And in your pursuit you're losing who you are like. You're losing the perspective of the value that you have on your life. You don't realize that you become poor now. You become lacking. Okay. So just to reiterate God has given us great value. He's putting great value on our life, on our soul, who he's called us to be, who we are. But a lot of times we don't discern it. Okay. Now let me continue on. So this young man, you know, he received his value from his father. When he lived in his father's house, he received the value from his father. But he, but he was the younger son, so he was the immature son. Or not the fully developed son. And he did something. He made an unwise decision. With what God had given him. With what his father had given him. And sometimes we do that. We make unwise decisions. With what God has given us. Now this young man. It says that not many days after. The young man gathered all together. And took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all. There arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in lack. I don't know. It's possible. So, what happens? You know, this is what happens to the believer. He wasted the substance. I don't know. He wasted the substance or what? What is the substance? The value. He wasted the value of what his father had given him. He wasted it all. How? He wasted it with riotous living. First of all, he left his father's house. He went into a far country. I mean, he went into another place. Like, he left the dominion of his father. Like, he left the country of his kinsmen. Like, and he joined himself to people in a far away, in another country, in another place that had a different culture, that thought differently, that had a different belief system. He came into agreement with different people. So, and he lived a lifestyle that was not pleasing to God. So because he lived a lifestyle that wasn't pleasing to his father, a riotous lifestyle, you know, he, he, he found himself in a different place than where his father's house was or is. 
and he connected and came into agreement with people that it, it may not be wise for him to join himself with. And because of that, he ended up losing the value of what his father gave to him. Now that sounds like many of us. You know, we venture outside of the kingdom of God, a faraway country. We connect that we connect with people that's in the flesh, people that's in the world, people that, you know, that don't discern the value. Of who God is, who God is in your life, who you are, we end up compromising who we are. We end up losing the value, losing the perspective of what God says about us. Then we start to operate carnally, like, you know, we start to operate. Yeah. You know, we start to operate carnally, like, I don't know what type of fun they get out of that, like being childish. You know, we lose perspective, like, you know, we start dealing with our feelings and emotions. You, you know, we start reaching for different things to fulfill our lives that God has not purposed to be full or fulfillment for us. That's what this young man did. It says, and when he joined himself to a citizen of that country, he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would vain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So now he find he's finding a situation where he's lonely, you know, he can't get a helping hand. He's willing to eat eat the food that pigs eat. Let's talk about that. He's willing to eat the foods that pigs eat. You know? Pigs eat the filth of the earth. Like Pigs eat the filth of the earth. They'll eat mud. They'll eat anything. Jesus said it in this way when he described pigs. He said, when Jesus talked about the pigs, what did he say? He said, um, do not cast your pearls to swine. <laughs> you got jokes, beloved. God bless you. Not right now, beloved. You're just being mad rude. My head is long, unfortunately. It's just how God made it. But praise God. So, see, this is what we're talking about. Casting your pearls to swine. We're giving out all revelation. And this guy right here, you know what I'm saying? It's like a, it's like a swine. It's like he don't even discern the value is being spoken. You know what I'm saying? But I pray just like the prodigal son, he'll come to himself and realize. <clears throat> but anyway, Jesus said that, come on, bro, stop being corny. I, you know, I'm just going to block him. I don't know how you do it, but I'm just going to try to block him. Because I got the, yeah, I don't know how on this one, like. So, amen. Jesus said that, you know, with pigs, they don't discern the value, you know. They don't discern the value. That's why I said don't pass your pearls to a swine. Because the, a, a swine, you know, they won't discern the value of that pearl. They'll eat the pearl the same way they eat a grain of corn. They'll eat the pearl the same way they'll eat trash, so Jesus said, don't, don't give what's valuable to swine because swine don't discern the value of things. Like, So now you see the condition that this man f found himself in. You know, he was lonely. He was looking for help, but nobody would help him. You know, he even considered eating the slop that pigs eat. So he found himself operating at a level with pigs, not discerning the value of what's on his life. He found himself eating slop, and that's what we do, you know, when we venture far from the Father's house, when we connect ourselves with the wrong people, when we start operating in a different system, when we start operating in the world and not operating in the spirit, like, you know, we lose perspective of who God is, who God said that we are, the promises of God, you know, we're not filled with the substance of the Holy Spirit, we're not filled with the fruits of the Spirit. 
So we start operating in the flesh. We start looking for fulfillment and different things. We start feeding off the fleshly nature. We start getting fulfillment off sin, off lust, off perversion, you know, on and on and on, like. And we lose ourselves, like, we get so lost in these things that, you know, it comes to a point where we be like, man, how did I get here? Like, how did I get so far away from God? You know, how did I get so far away from prayer? How did I get so far walking in faith? How did I get so far from these things? Like, we venture away from the Father's house. When the last time you spent time in the presence of God? When the last time I spent time in prayer? When the last time I spent time waiting on the Lord? When the last time I sat before the Lord and, and just fellowship with him and let him pour into me? When the last time I opened up my Bible? It says that this young man, it says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger? So he came to himself. If he came to himself, wherever he was at, he wasn't with himself. If he had to come to himself, that means that wherever he was at, he wasn't with himself. In other words, he there was a disconnect in his spirit. There was a disconnect in his heart. There was a disconnect in his mind. He was disconnected from who God created him to be. You know? And he had to come to the realization that how he was living, he had fell short of the glory. That his father called him to live at a standard here, but he was living here. He was living below his means. He was living be below what his father had purpose for his life. He was living like a pig, but he really was a son. He realized even servants had a better lifestyle than what he was living. I thank God for the Holy Spirit that when we get so lost that we don't discern our value or we, we get so far away from the Father's house to where we living in slop and living in filth. I thank God for the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit helps us come to ourselves. The Holy Spirit reminds us of the promises of God. The Holy Spirit reminds us of the purpose of God for our life. The Holy Spirit tap you on the shoulder and bring you into remembrance of who Jesus is and what he's done for your life. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit. Now, this is another thing interesting about this story. It says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. See, he said, I'm not worthy. That word worthy means that you, when you say that you're not worthy, it means that you lack worth or excellence. So he, even though he was coming to himself, he, he started to judge himself by the mistakes that he made. He said, based on the mistakes that I made, I lack worth now. Like, I'm not as good as I used to be to, to my father. Like. My father, I used to be a son, but because of the bad decisions I made, I'm not worth that anymore. Oftentimes, the spirit of the, the enemy, the spirit of condemnation try to rest upon us because we've sinned, because we've fallen short. And then because we've made these mistakes, we start to look at ourselves differently. I know, God, you said I'm a son, but I'm not worthy. I own maybe just let me be a servant. Like he starts saying, Well, I'm a servant of God. When God said, No, you a son of God. Amen. And that's what he did. He went to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell and kissed his neck and kissed him. And his son said unto the father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. So he went through his whole spiel about how he's not worthy and he's, he doesn't have value and because of his mistakes, he's not as valuable anymore. But watch what the father said to him. Peace and blessings. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. 
and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive. Now you notice the father never, never vouched for anything that the son was saying. The father didn't answer the son's request to just let him be a servant in, the, in his house. The father still looked at his son as a son. No matter what his son been through, no matter the filth, the bad decisions that his son made, no matter the wrong people that his son joined with, no matter how far away from the father the son traveled, no matter if the son found himself eating slop with filthy pigs, those things didn't matter to the father. It didn't take away the value that his son had in his life. The son said, I'm not even worthy to be a son. The father said, go get the best robes for my son. And sometimes that's how we are, you know. We come back to the father with a whole sob story. God, I'm not worthy. God, I repent. I'm nothing. God said, no, you're everything to me. Right? God, I'm not worthy. No, God says, no, you have great wealth to me. You mean so much to me, I gave Jesus as a ransom for you. God, if you just if you just let me just be a servant, God, if you just... God said, no, I call you to a high calling. I called you with a great purpose to save many souls alive. And then God puts the best robe of righteousness on us. And he give us the ring that signifies that we're of his family. It signifies covenant. That we're of the family of God. That we belong to him. And he reinstates us back into the family as if we've never left. He reinstates us back into our position with him as if we've never fallen off. Do you know how valuable you are to God? Do we really realize how valuable we are to God? That it's not what we've been through or the bad mistakes that we made that make us who we are. Paul said it this way, I am who I am by the grace of God. So by the grace and the love and the mercy of God, God has defined my worth by pursuing me with an everlasting love. No one pursues or seeks after something that they don't determine to be, to have great value to them. God has pursued us from eternity into the present moment. Why? Because we mean so much to God. You know, we mean so much to God. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to stop beating yourself up for how many mistakes you made. I want you to stop condemning yourself because you didn't do everything right. I want you to stop, you know, devaluing yourself and thinking that other people are greater than you. You are great. God made you great. God made you perfect. You perfect in the eyes of God. You a billionaire. You. I'm not talking about how much stuff you got. I'm talking about you. You are a billionaire. Like. You are worth pursuing. God felt that you were worth pursuing. God felt that the payment for your life, the ransom for your liberty is his own son. Don't devalue yourself. Don't condemn yourself. Don't feel like you should take your life because your life doesn't matter. If people don't discern the value in your life, know that God knows the value in your life. He created you with great meaning and purpose. Like You're fearfully and wonderfully made. You have great value to God. So stop devaluing yourself. Stop esteeming other people to be more important or more valuable to, to you. Stop esteeming and being covetous thinking that what other people have is greater than what you have. You have God. You a son of God. 
And that's the greatest wealth that God can give us. An identity. So let your light shine. So that when people see the good works that you're doing, they'll give God the glory. Let your light shine, not God's light. Let your light, who you are, be bright. Like, Be bright. Be, be who you are, like simply. Be who God called you to be. Because who you are, simply, and who God called you to be, has great value. Not only to God, but to others, to me. You know, I appreciate you. And to those that are lost, that you might speak a word of life to them. Like To those that are sick, that you may lay hands and let the power of the Holy Spirit flow through you to bring healing. Those that don't have direction where you can give counsel and instruction to. You know? Praise God. Praise God. So I just want you guys to be encouraged. You know, if, you, if you're like that son that feel like you're not worth it, that you're only good enough to be a servant because of the mistakes you made, and you feel like you're that person that's in a faraway country, you can always come back to the Father's house. You feel like you lost your substance. you feeling drained. You're feeling carnal. You know, you're feeling weary. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden with burden, and I will give you rest. Go spend time. Come back to the Father's house. like. Come sit before Father God and let him pour into your spirit. Spend some time in prayer and worship and ask Holy Spirit to fill you up with the substance again. You, you start to feel like you're losing faith. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. So sometimes we start losing faith. We start losing the substance of faith and it's hard to believe God. But just get in his presence, get in his word and let faith come to you. Let faith be revived in you. Amen. Amen. I pray that this scope encouraged someone today. I pray that this scope uh, was like a sword that was able to cut through that condemnation that tried to rest upon you. I pray that through it, someone would understand that their life has great meaning to God. And God is not through with you, you yet. No matter how old, young you are, God loves you. He has a great investment for your life and he's determined to see it come to pass. So keep walking with God. Get up, come to yourself. Realize you more than where you are. You're more than what people say about you. You're more than your mistakes. You're more than your failures. You are more than a conqueror. Praise God. Peace and blessings, family. I love y'all. I pray that you have a blessed night. I just want to say a prayer for you. Father, I thank you for my family on Periscope, on the conference line, for the body of Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for their lives, Lord God, that they have great meaning and purpose. I'm asking, Holy Spirit, that you would take this word, take this seed, and just illuminate it, breathe upon it, water it, Lord God, increase it in our lives that we would understand, Lord God, who we are in you and what it means to be a son. And what it means to walk with you. What it means to be a king's kid. What it means to be a child of covenant, God. The enemy always try to get us to question who we are. If we be a son. If we be that. We should be able to do this. We should be a lot further in life. But I thank you, Lord, that we are right where we need to be. In your hands. And I thank you that you are the author and finisher of our faith. And I know that you're faithful to your word to finish the work that you started on us. Thank you, Lord, for seeing the best in us when everyone around us can only see the worst. Thank you for counting our life to have great worth and excellence, Lord God, when we didn't count ourselves worthy. Now I'm asking for every person, Lord God, that has lost their substance, lost their faith, been operating in the flesh, feeling carnal, feeling emotional, Lord God, feeling drained, feeling weary. 
I'm asking Holy Spirit that you will fill every single person with the river of living water that flows from heaven, that flows out of our spirit. Fill us up, God, till we overflow, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. All right, family, I love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'm about to go lay with my wife and chill with her and watch TV. Y'all have a blessed night, all right? Peace and blessings upon you. In Jesus' name.